Hi everyone. Earlier today, I was looking at a Facebook post by Trey Jones. He had this relatively simple shape and he just couldn't figure out how to draw this in Carbide Create. I thought this would make a good example project to take a look at some of the features in Carbide Create that a lot of new users miss. So first, we'll take a look at some of the Boolean operations available in Carbide Create, and then I'll show you how I use those features to create this exact shape for Trey. Boolean operations allow you to combine simple primitive shapes into more complicated geometry. We'll take a look at some of them now. By selecting more than one shape in Carbide Create, we'll get an additional option on the left for Boolean. Going across, we have the Boolean Union tool, we have the Boolean Intersection tool, and we have the Boolean Subtraction tool. Each tool is relatively simple to understand, but they can be used for powerful results. First, let's look at the Union tool. The Union tool causes Carbide Create to draw a single path that surrounds the entire existing selection. Perhaps it's simplest to show you. Here I have two intersecting rings. The Boolean Union tool caused Carbide Create to trace the outline, ignoring any overlapping geometry. These elements in here were simply removed in a single combined shape the trace to the perimeter now exists. This shape would be extremely difficult to draw on its own, but two circles are exceptionally easy. The Boolean intersection tool sort of does the inverse. The intersection tool looks for only the areas that are encompassed by both shapes. In this case, we're looking at just the area in here. Again, showing you is probably the simplest way. So here we have just this oval shape, which again represents the area where both circles overlapped. Finally, we have the Boolean subtraction tool. This tool is interesting because it does depend on the order you select your vectors in. If I select this circle first, then holding control, select this circle, and then perform a subtraction, it subtracts the second circle I selected from the first, leaving me with this slightly moon shape. If instead I select this circle and then this circle, it performs the same operation, but in reverse. So how can we use this tools to create this desired shape? Well, let's start by clearing our field and taking a moment to look at the job setup. The largest dimension in the project is eight and a half inches. So I've set the project for 10 by 10. We're not gonna be cutting this so the thickness doesn't particularly matter, but it's also important to note that I've set my grid spacing to one quarter of an inch. So these are quarter inch squares on my field. First, I'm gonna look at this left section. It's one and a half inches wide and eight and a half inches tall, and it goes all the way to the bottom. So we can actually make this out of a simple rectangle. I'll place anything on the field and then I'll use the size edit boxes over here to actually set it. It's already set for one and a half inches and I'll just update the height to eight and a half. There, and that gives me that left portion. I know that there's an area six inches wide and three and three quarters tall. And we start getting into the curves, but let's not worry about that yet. Let's simply create another rectangle to represent that bottom area. Again, I'll just put anything on the field and then use these edit boxes to enter my values. Six inches wide, 3.75 inches tall. And I know the bottom left of this is going to line up. So I'll just go ahead and line these up now. Now I can go ahead and save myself a step later and help myself kind of be clear about what I'm doing by taking these two shapes and unioning them. Aside from the curves, I have the general dimensions already set and that was only two steps. Now that I have the basic body, let's think about what we need to do next. We're going to need to add some geometry here to represent this curve. And we kind of need to slice away this corner. Now, if we just wanted the circle, the circle's easy. The radius is shown to us as being one inch. So let's make a circle with a one inch radius. And we can kind of immediately see that, yeah, so this is the path that we wanted to follow, but none of our operations really work here. If we unioned it, the circle would simply disappear as it's fully encompassed. If we intersected it, we'd get just the circle. And if we subtracted it, we'd just end up with a hole. But let's think about what we do with CNC operators. 
we know we can do multiple steps to get to our final project. We don't have to do it in just one. So what I really need is a shape like this. I want to cut away something this shaped. And I can take this over here and I can kind of make that tool. We're going to make our own custom cutter, so to speak, to cut away this corner. So to do that is pretty simple. I'm going to draw a box. It's important that by the time I finish, the bottom left corner is in the center of the circle. And the rest of the box just has to be larger than the circle. In this case, I made it quite a bit larger. That part doesn't matter. I'm going to start by selecting the square, and then I'm going to control select the circle, making sure to do the circle second and do a subtraction. You can see now I'm left with this new shape. And this shape, if I line it up on my grid, is the shape I want to cut away. So now reversing the selection order, I'm going to select the shape I want to keep and select my new custom cutter. And then I'm going to subtract. And now I've created that radius on the edge of this. Let's do something similar over here so that we can add our one and a half inch radius. So let's use the circle tool just to get a, ourselves a, a one and a half inch radius. And likewise, we can, if we line this up on the grid, we can visualize the piece we want to create. So how do we make that? Well, well, we can put the circle onto the grid. We can create a box. In this case, it is important that this corner and this corner end up on the edges of the circle. And then we'll keep the box selected, select our circle and perform a subtraction. Now this time, instead of using this as a cutter, we're going to use it as positive geometry. I'm going to align this to the corner of where I want the curve to be. Select my two shapes and perform a union operation. And here we have the final shape. I wasn't taking time to stop and explain it. This really would only take about two minutes. Uh, it's not difficult once you know how those tools work. And once you start to kind of picture not what button can I click to make this work, but what sequence can I follow? What tools can I build? What shapes can I create to then create other shapes? Though I personally do recommend using tools like Inkscape or Illustrator, learning these tools really will get you over a lot of the limitations of Carbide Create. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like this content and want to see more, let me know about ideas you have for future videos in the comments. Consider leaving a thumbs up and definitely consider subscribing.